know that last time that you guys came over, you said that um, it was like really good for tourism. How has COVID, has COVID changed that much? We were heading in 2020, and I think both of us realized this early in the game for probably the biggest tourism year ever, uh, yeah. to the point it was early in 2020. How are we going to get this all done? And we went from top of the cloud to a plummet oh. in, in a matter of a couple of weeks. I know that our museum uh, had 283 bus tours booked. Yeah. And then COVID hit and everyone canceled. And when you look at it, there's probably on the average of 40 people on a bus. Yeah. It was amazing. You know, it was. Our tourism numbers were gone rich with roof. It increased 100% over X number of years, and then zero. And we were meeting like with the Chamber of Commerce and the Legion people and the hotels and, and so on to go, how are we going to make this work? Like we are literally going to be bursting at the seams with tourists. That was early in 2020. Yeah. And COVID can come in and overnight, literally. Well, I'll up. tell you, uh, on March the 12th, I was in London speaking on a roof, rooftop along with Bonnie Harris to uh, a bunch of very rich tourism investors about this being the year of the tourist. 2020, I'm in London, overlooking Leicester Square and the Thames River, and I was in a taxi the next morning on the way to the airport and home and the two weeks in the basement, and when we finally got outdoors, everything was, there was, everyone was shot. You know, it, it really crippled the tourism sector. And it's, it's recovering now, and please no more uprisings and variants because uh, we're just getting her back on the rails now, and, and it's much nicer. The activity is really picking up. As a matter of fact, the play is going to be in Gander uh, for September 13th, 14th, and 15th, yeah. and all of our shows are sold out. They yeah. crashed the system. Yeah, we, we overload the computers. We've, yeah. we've been done that several times, like crash servers. Yeah people trying to scramble for tickets. So it's please, no good. more variants and uprisings because I've really... And please really come to Gander, Newfoundland, Labrador. Yes. Your wheels screech you in. <laughs> and, it will be, and, and it will be fun, yeah. You gotta understand Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, all right? We have a saying, let's get her done. Let's get her done. All right, let's get it done. Let's get her done. And when the COVID hit, and our province said, okay, we're gonna shut her down. We said, okay, okay we'll shut, shut her down. down. That would got to be done, fine. Just get her done. It wasn't fun, you know, uh, and it disrupted everything from day-to-day -day workings of business to picking up your groceries to yeah. going to places you love going to going out to eat. But the you hospitality did. sector, you know, got yeah. really smacked with it and so on. Yeah. But, you know, we're coming out of it and we're going to support our own. We're, we're going to make it work again. I'm going to tell you, I'm medium chubby. For the last two years, it went all... Uh, and the restaurants, the only way they're going to survive is through takeout, takeaway as they call it down here. And uh, I bought more takeout in 18 months. You never said that by looking at you, though, would you? No. No. Uh, 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 than I've ever in my life. Yeah. But it was a way to support the industry. It, it affected the town. You see, you got to remember, in, in Newfoundland and Labrador, the whole province we only got 530,000 people, so you could get in a car and drive to a place around the shore, looking at the water rolling in, and not a soul around. Yeah. So you got to get out. It wasn't like sometimes, like the city, this you know, shut down because you can't go here, you can't go there because there's people. Yeah. In Newfoundland and Labrador, you, you could just go on and go for a nice drive, and, and that's what was done. And there's so many little businesses and places you can eat, tiny little places. The food is amazing, the hospitality is amazing, but they're in a small town and they're just a small operation. Yeah. And these are the people that we're really trying to support because they need it, you know? And, and, and it's important to do that. Because if you don't, they won't survive. That's right. Last time you guys came over, you said that Australians were some of the like nicest people yes. that you've yes. met. Have you found any difference in 
people after COVID? What's it like traveling in Australia now? No, the same. And, and there's there's a crossover not far back in our history where we came I, from the same place. I, I figured it's an Australian that got out of Newf or Newf got, got out, out of Australia. Australia. Or Some are on luck. You know, one went this way, one went that way. And we, we got one of the brothers and the other brother came here. But somewhere along the way, we're too much alike to not have yeah. come from the same backgrounds. And, and I don't know if it's the island mentality Right? Because you're on an island, all right, this is it, this is who we are, and this is what we got. And the same thing for Newfoundland and Labrador. And we have the same sense of humor. Same sense of humor, same quirky expressions. Same quirky, you know, and we have, like you have the koala bear and a few other things, but we have, we have the, the uh, moose, new, moose <laughs> little bear, Newfoundland dog, the Labrador dog. We have a Newfoundland pony, and the pony only in the world. It's that's what uh, it's after Newfoundland and Labrador, yeah. and it, the, the male he changes colors in winter. Yeah, yeah. I've never heard about that. Before. Yeah. yeah, the Newfoundland pony. It's, it's Newfoundland worth looking pony. up. So I don't know. <laughs> and it takes you right back there. I don't know how many people will be watching this, but my advice is go. Yeah, get your tickets now and get out and see. It's the story the world go. needs to see and wants to see. It it reaffirms that you know the world is, is a good place with good people in it. Do you think it's more relevant to tell the story of Come From Away now after Now COVID? more than ever. Yeah. The world uh, needs to hear this it, story. It's, it's everything. It's not only COVID. It's Russia going into you know, Ukraine. It's, it's tough it's, economic it's times. tough yeah. economic times. We're talking now recession. We're talking so many other things. We're talking you know, the, uh, what the Prime Minister of Japan was just uh, assassinated. assassinated a couple of days ago. There seems to be a, a feel that people have put up a wall of hatred, and to me, the, this play, and, and it's not. And I know some people are going to say, "Ah, that's just fellow from Canada because he's in it." No, no, but that's not it. Let's go right to the basis of the raw story. It's, yes. it's the message go the world to the story. needs. Go to the story, not not to me and not to him. Yeah. Go to the story yeah. of what it is. Is and and the big word, and we've said it. I don't know how many times. The big word is love. Yeah. We care. And it doesn't take much. No. It doesn't take a whole lot of energy to be nice to someone. And let someone know that, I mean, you're going through a rough time, but hey, we got you.